Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here. Welcome back to this mini workshop on the Adobe 3D Tools in Action. So in the previous video, I basically showed you how to set up the scene, how to uh, transfer the materials and all of that, uh, kind of like the boring setup that we have to do. But now we're going to get into the, the fun part, which is tweaking the materials and, and blending them together in Substance 3D Painter. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here is where we left off. Uh, of course, this doesn't look <laughs> anything like what we had in the final render, but it's all about tweaking the materials and the scale of it and, and all of that. Right now, it is pretty pretty intense, the, the height map, the normal map, and all of that. But that's one of the great things about working with Substance 3D Painter, that you can affect every single um, channel independently. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. This is the simplest one, so this mug right here. And I mentioned in the previous video that I have two options, and I think I like this one a lot more, uh, just because of the, you know, the intensity of the normals. So let's take the original first, and let's go to the properties field right here, and it has to be with the selected layer. And we can change things like the projection, like the scale, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to leave the UV projection because that all of these um, assets they have UVs. The only thing is that if you rotate around you might see the seam, right? Because that's where the cut of the UVs are. Uh, but that's that's the only thing to keep in mind, right? Uh, if you want to avoid that, and if you have a material that is not tileable, like in the case of the of the first material that we created, we can change the projection from UV to triplanar. So changing that allows you to have this box that you can basically move around and position the material the way that you want to. So I'm going to switch to scale so that I can scale this material. I'm going to press the R on my keyboard, and that brings me to the, to the scale of this bounding box that you see here. So I can scale this down like so, right? And let's go ahead and move closer and press the W key to bring in this gizmo. We can try to find like a nice area where this works. I kind of want to go for um, something lighter at the top, like so, and maybe something darker at the bottom. But anyway, that's just one way to go about it. Uh, you can also click on these icons here at the top. So that's what I'm accessing with the W, E, and R. So W for moving, E for rotation, and R for scaling. So you can actually rotate this the, the texture there if you want to. I'm going to undo that. So that's one way to go about it. In this case, like I said, it's a lot easier but you can go to the UV projection and you can do the same thing, but in the in the UV space. So for that, I'm gonna bring in the 3D to 2D view here from the top, from this drop down, right? And we can take this, uh, you see it's very familiar with the manipulators that we have in the 3D uh, sampler. So I can scale this down, holding shift like so, and move it around. And we're still using the, the UV maps, right? The UV projection but I can place this a lot better, at least in the very cool axis of this, um, of this glass. I think something like that might be interesting, but this is definitely really, really strong, right? So that's what I was getting at. <laughs> so in the, in the properties of this, um, of this layer, you have the ability to turn on and off, um, you know, the roughness, the, let's turn everything off. So we have the color that is basically the, the albedo from the 3D sampler material we created. We have the metal, in this case, there's no metallic information, the roughness, the normal, and the height, right? So you see when I turn on the height, the normal is actually pretty nice, right? We have all those nice details. So the one that is kind of like ruining everything is the height map. So this is what I wanted to show you. So you can add a levels, for example, to tweak only the height map. So I'm going to enable the height map. I'm going to click on, in the, in the layer stack, I'm going to click on levels. Right? So now these levels is an adjustment layer or, a, or an effect that is only attached to this layer. right? And if we select that, in the properties you have the base color. You can choose any channel you want. So we're going to target the height map. And we're going to reduce, let's just move this that way. right? And we're going to play around with this, um, with this lighter. So that, that is the reason why I like to play with them or to leave the materials as they are as they come from a 3D sampler. And in Substance 3D Painter, I can have a lot of control over the influence of this, uh, this specific channel. So I'm going to push this back quite a bit. And we can contrast this even more if we wanted to, maybe the middle ground or the middle values. So this is the, 
this is the fun part, right? Just to start playing with those uh, with those sliders uh, to get something, you know, something that we want. Now, another thing is that you can target the opacity of the channel to tone the, the effect even, even lower than this. So let me give you an example. So if I select the layer, so if I turn this on and off, you see there's still quite a bit of a contrast in there. So what I can do is leave this on, go to, in the layers, go to the hide channel. So now I'm just targeting that hide channel and I can go to the opacity and play around with the opacity as well. So you see, it's kind of like turning it on and off, but you have the ability to change the opacity with this slider. Um, so we can just lower the opacity a little bit and that's a lot better, right? So I can turn that on and off and you see it's very, very subtle. Cool, so that's what I'm after, right? So that's all I needed to do in terms of setting up the, uh, the hide map, right? But we now can take this and reposition it a little bit better. So I'm gonna go for something lighter at the top, like I said, and darker at the bottom. Uh, you can also scale this if you wanted to. Just be careful because, you know, we have like rounded shapes. So if we scale this too much, it will be very, very obvious. But, you know, something like this, I think works just fine. There we go. All right, so I think that is looking nice. And even in the inside, we also have um, this dark area as well. Uh, the only thing that we need to be careful about is this... Um, this seam, but we just need to be clever as the as the way that we uh, place this in the in the final scene. You can go ahead and duplicate that, and you know, mask an area, and you know, it it becomes a little bit more complex, which is something that we can do maybe in a different material. But uh, we're gonna keep it simple on this one. So just to do a quick recap, all we did was select the the material that we that we chose or that we dropped into this mesh. Uh, we went to the UV mapping and we changed this to three planar projection just to show you that that's one way to do it. But I left it in UV uh, UV projection. And then to change the the intensity of the of the hide map, we just went to the effects scene here and click on add levels, add those levels, and we target the hide map and we just change the you know the contrast of this. And that's what we get, or that's what we have so far. All right, so that's the most basic thing. I'm going to do the same thing with the other material. So let's turn this one off, bring in the next one, which I think is, you know, pretty cool. We might do a couple of them. Um, so I like the way that this is being placed, but we can also rotate things around as well. And I'm just going to try to place this in a better position. And from the scale here in the properties, we can also add, maybe set it to three. Maybe that's too much. Maybe two, two is fine. And we can play around with the with the position of that. All right, I think something like that might work just fine. Uh, but of course, we can tweak the hide map. Again, if I turn that off, that's kind of like the one giving us the, the biggest difference, right? So again, the same thing. Click on the levels or the effects uh, here, add levels, select the levels, and choose hide. That's the one that we're targeting. And then we're going to play around with these values. All right, so that's that's looking good. And of course, we can go to the hide channel and turn that, oops, and lower the opacity, right? Um, and this is something else that you can do with the normal map, right? So just in case, let's say the, the normal is too strong, we can go ahead and click on the normal channel and also play around with the opacity. So we can turn that down a little bit, but I think it's working just fine. Cool, so we have now two materials that are part of the same object. Let's keep it simple. Let's go with uh, number one. So let's go back to this one, to the more complex one. So like that. And we're going to have to do the same thing. So I'm going to start with the base material, which is the color that I want to, you know, the base color that is going to be part of most <laughs> of most areas of this, um, of this mug. So I can bring in the levels. And I'm going to change this to hide and change all of this. And by the way, you can totally uh, tweak all of that from uh, Substance 3D Sampler. Like I said, I prefer to do it with Substance 3D Painter just because it allows me to have more control over exactly what areas I want to push or what areas I want to, um, you know, you can invert this, for example. Uh, so that's all from the texturing process. And let's go ahead and change the opacity as well. Alrighty. So that's looking pretty good. 
and we can do the same thing for the other materials before we blend them or mix them. So let's do the same thing for the copper material. Add a levels. And let's set the height as the target. All right. And another thing we need to do, actually, that I forgot to do in the previous one. Um, let's turn that off. Go back to ceramic. Is to change the scale, right? So right now, this might be too small, or these indentations might be too small or too big. So we can just do this. Just push this box and just try to find a nice, a nice set of details. I think that's looking good. Um, this, are, this looks a little bit blurred, but that is just the, uh, the size of the maps that we're currently working on. So if you go to the texture set settings and scroll up, right now we're using uh, 248 for this entire set. So we can just change that to 4K. So that should improve things. But, you know, let's just keep it simple. Um, and then we can work on the, on the size of these details. So let's go back to the layers and do the same thing for the metal. Scale this down. You can do it from the 2D uh, to the image. Uh, I kind of like prefer to do that, but you can also do it from in here, from these um, sliders. But I prefer to do it manually like that and then just place things. Um, you can offset the same thing that I'm doing in interactively. You can do it from here. You can just offset things with the slider if that uh, suits you. But again, I prefer to do it myself like this. There we go. And another thing I want to do is go to the height map. And instead of just lowering the opacity of the, of the metal, you'll see that even if I lower this to zero, you still have those little dots or these little indentations from the, uh, the ceramic material. That is because we are combining the height of the original material and this metal, right? So if I turn this off, you'll see it's gone. So we're combining the, the normal and the height of this uh, material. So all we have to do is in this drop down, this is kind of like the blending mode. We just need to change to replace and push this all the way up to 100. And now we are replacing the, the intensity of that height map, right? That's kind of like what I want to do, but I want to reduce this a bit more. And in fact, let's go to the ceramic and reduce the height as well. Just a tiny bit. So now we have the metal and the ceramic. Uh, we can also switch to the normal channel. And as well, in the, in the metal, we can replace that. So replace, you see that changes things a little bit uh, so that we have more influence of that metallic uh, material, almost like it's, it's just added on top of the ceramic anyway. And that's pretty much it, really. So we have two materials. And then the third one, just in case we want to use it, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So selecting that. Maybe scale that down a bit. And we're going to go to the height map straight away and just reduce the intensity of that height map. So that's, that's working fine. All right, so I'm going to now turn off the 2D, 3D view so that we only go to the 3D view. And we're going to start blending the materials. So let's turn everything back to the kind of like the default setting. So base mesh, I'm going to set the ceramic as my base. And I'm going to use the metal to sort of like target some indentations and some interesting areas. Again, I'm gonna try to recreate something, something like that, that I think is pretty cool. Um, but you can do whatever you want, right? So in order to target those uh, crevices, that's where we're gonna be using some of the, or we're gonna take advantage of some of the mesh maps that we originally set up. So let's go to the layers, click on the copper, and I'm gonna create a black mask. So I'm gonna click on this icon, black mask, and of course, a black mask kind of like get rid of everything, but I can press the shift key to hide it and see what's going on, right? To see the material. That's just a quick shortcut to hide or unhide the mask. All right, so now that I have the mask, what I can do is click on these effects and go to the add generator. And this is what the, the fun begins. I'm gonna click on generator here and I'm gonna choose something like the curvature, right? And the curvature is actually going to look at this map that we provided, which is the the curvature map, and it's going to restrict the effect or restrict the, the copper material to the areas of that curvature. And obviously we will be able to tweak that, but it's pretty cool. So click on generator, curvature, and there we go. So this is why it's, um, yeah, this is the fun part, right? So we can, we can see immediately what's going on. You know, something kind of like what we, what we have in here, but we can obviously tweak this 
uh, a lot more. So we're going to diffuse those edges a bit more and um, mix them up a little bit. So if we select the curvature um, generator here, we can blur things up a bit, but it's too intense. So I'm just going to keep it as maybe a tiny bit. And we can change the global balance. So this is going to reduce or increase the reach of that effect. So I want to reduce it. I'm going to keep it things very, very subtle. And if we expand the curvature, we can start playing with the, the sharpness, uh, you know, the fine details. And like I did in a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the effects on layers in 3D Sampler, this is the same thing. It's just looking at what these sliders do, just pushing them all the way up or down. So I think this is uh, this is looking good. Just add a bit more brightness there. Uh, but that's as a starting point. I think this is looking um, pretty decent, actually. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit more of this global balance, and that's as easy as it gets, right? <laughs> you just have two materials that we created in 3D Sampler, and then in 3D Painter, that's where I go and you know add all these generators and and all of that to mix them up, right? So the next thing I want to do is maybe add another layer of complexity to this mask. So I can go ahead and click on maybe. Let's go for add fill, right? And adding a fill allows you to, let's say, go to the texture scene here, and we can go ahead and type a procedural. And let's just look for an interesting procedural that we can add as a bit of dirtiness or to add dirtiness to this, um, like this grunge concrete. Let's try this one. Uh, let's select the fill, and in the properties, let's drop that into the grayscale. So now this grunge, this, the, the values of this grunge, the black and white um, values are controlling the rest of the mask. So again, we can go to the properties and change the balance of that, right? And the contrast so that you can see a bit better what is, this is doing. And I think that's, um, that's a, nice, um, yeah, a nice transition. So what we can do as well is rotate these so that kind of like the stripy areas of the concrete are following the same lines or vertical lines uh, of the original mesh. So let's rotate these 90 degrees. And let's continue tweaking the balance. All right. So now we need to mix this grunge with this curvature. So what we can do is either multiply, overlay, or screen. So if I go ahead and maybe subtract, actually, what this is going to do is take that grunge and whatever um, the areas of that grunge are visible, is going to subtract them from that curvature, right? So you see, I'm just tweaking that area, and that allows me to break apart these uh, these details that I wanted. And of course, we can select the concrete uh, grunge and continue adjusting the balance and the contrast. There we go. So it's all about the subtleties, right? So that's um that's a nice addition to this material. Um, but I kind of like want to have this almost fully metallic, <laughs> this um, this ring at the top and at the bottom, kind of like that. And this uh, grunge is destroying that. So what I can do is add a more manual approach to it. So let's add a add paint. So all of these, everything that I'm doing is just to tweak and change this, um, this mask. So now I can take this paint, select a brush. Let's go to the brushes. And let's find something very simple. Uh, it could be this. Let's go for uh, cement, or yeah, let's go for cement. Cement two, and I'm gonna hold Control and right click to reduce the size of my brush. You can do the same thing uh, from the properties, and I'm just gonna start painting these areas. Um, let's actually choose a different brush, maybe something like charcoal. This one allows you to do more manual painting, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Uh, maybe connect one of those, you know, some of these lines with the top, but I'm not going to go through the entire thing. Just want to show you that you can also do more manual work um, using a, a custom painting layer within the mask. So if I hold the Alt key and click on the, on the mask, you can actually see what you're painting, right? So starting from the beginning, this is the, the base that we got with the curvature. Then we added the grunge set to subtraction. So it's re subtracting some of those nice uh, texture bits. And then with the custom paint, we're just adding this, um, 
you know, connection in here. And you can actually select in the paint layer, you can paint and and see directly the, the masking that you're painting, which is great. But let's go ahead and get out of this one, just selecting the actual material. And just to wrap it up, or to wrap up this initial setup of materials, I'm gonna click on enabling this ceramic rough orange, and I wanna apply this to the inner area or the inner part of this, of this glass. So let's turn that on. And I'm gonna add a black mask as well. But instead of adding, you know, generators or anything like that, I'm just gonna use add paint, right? That allows you to literally just paint whatever you wanna have that material. But instead of just painting it manually, because that will take a, a while, um, I'm going to enable 2D and 3D view so that you can see what I'm going to do. And in here from the left-hand side, I'm going to click on this icon, which is the polygon fill. And at the top, you can choose between filling by a triangle, by quads or polygons, mesh or UVs. And because I created the UVs with a specific purpose, I can select the UVs, right? And I can click on the inner side, which is essentially this bit right here. and um, Substance 3D Painter basically applies an automatic mask base on the UV islands. So let's go back to painting and that's what we get, right? So inside this mesh or inside this glass, we have a different material. Uh, and this is pretty cool because then we can add another layer. So another add paint and let's also go back to 3D. And I'm going to select something like dirt too. Uh, and I can just go through the edges of this and just kind of like mix this a bit more so it's not perfect. So that's the, the whole point of this uh, pottery scene is that it's, it's kind of like stylish, but not very, it's not perfect. Uh, and I kind of like the, the roughness of it. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and you notice that the bottom one is doesn't, doesn't have the, the material either. So we can go back to this first or original paint layer, do the same thing, click on the polygon fill and just click the bottom. And there we go. So that's pretty cool. Alrighty, so that's looking good. Um, one thing that I might want to do is just variate the original color a bit more. So the, the original base color. So one thing again that you can do is select the material, go to adding fill layer. So that's going to add a fill layer kind of like covering everything, but we can drop a procedural. So let's go to the textures and let's select a procedural like Maybe something like a grunge dirt thing. Drop that into the base color. And this is pretty much what we what we can see. In fact, let's turn everything off just so that you can see better what this layer is doing. Uh, this is still the material. It's just that we added a fill to the material and, and that basically overrides the entire thing. So I'm going to change the size of this. And the, the most important thing that I want to do is blend this differently. So I'm going to change normal to, uh, oh, sorry, there is sometimes when you have like multiple monitors, the drop down appears in a second monitor. So I'm just going to select a uh, screen, right? And then you see all the white areas are the ones that we can see. Um, and of course, you know, we can tweak the intensity, but actually what I need is multiply. So let's change it to multiply and change the contrast of that layer, something like that. All we're doing right now is a using a grunge map into a fill layer that is part of this material. And we set the fill layer to multiply so that we can see through um, all the white areas and only the dark areas are coming through. And now I'm just gonna change the opacity from that fill layer quite a bit. So it's just um, kind of like making it a little bit more dirtier than before. So if I turn this on and off, you see it's quite a bit of a change. Now in this fill layer, I'm also gonna change the roughness just to variate things a bit more. And let's bring back everything else. And if you want to make things even more interesting, what you can do is create another layer uh, with a different color, for example. So just a fill layer, normal color layer. Uh, set this to maybe a, a, you know, a brighter blue color. Create a black mask, right? And in that black mask, you can bring in a fill layer and drop a different generator or a different, uh, sorry, crunch in here. And, you know, play around with that as well. So right now I'm just editing that mask or the intensity of that mask. And we can also set the blending mode of that color to be multiply as well and change the color here. So that changes things quite a bit as well. Uh, but especially the reason I did that is not only to variate the color a tiny bit more, but you see it just changes the, 
the roughness of that um, of that ceramic, uh, which is cool. And you can also change the opacity of the roughness. So if I go to the roughness channel, so you can see what's actually happening when I turn this on and off, it's variating that roughness quite a bit. So one thing you can do is go to the roughness channel and change the opacity of that entire thing. So now the more reflective areas, these darker areas right here, are the ones that are coming from that metal copper. Right? So that's exactly what I want. Perfect. So now we have a couple of glasses, right? That look pretty cool. And hopefully the, the tools and the and the techniques that I just showed you are of help. Uh, we can, you know, go back and tweak this as much as we want to. But I'm going to leave this video here. And in the next one, we're going to cover these other more complex materials. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.